Hey guys, what's up? My name is Eric and I'm the Techie Agent and today we're taking a look at your wearable news updates for June 2017. So the first bit of news is that the wearable maker Move is looking for a buyout option from either Intel or Fitbit. Now Move is obviously a wearable maker that also pairs their wearables with applications that provide real-time coaching. And that's kind of their proprietary niche uh, element in the whole wearable uh, world. And that is that they provide coaching that is above and beyond what other wearable makers are doing at the time. And uh, Intel and both Fitbit are interested specifically in this coaching technology, looking to integrate coaching technology into their existing or future existing wearables. Now, Intel is not really in the wearable game. They have the Basis B1 and the Basis Peak, and neither of those did very well. As a matter of fact, the Basis Peak was recalled because it had, it had battery exploding issues. And so uh, they've kind of taken a step back, and they're looking to dive back into the wearable game by acquiring Move and potentially kind of jump-starting and restarting uh, their wearable manufacturing. So it would be interesting to see if Intel acquires them, what they do with Move's technology uh, with forthcoming wearables that might be released from Intel. Now Fitbit, on the other hand, has a very robust platform. They are the number one wearable maker in the world. And it would only make sense for Fitbit to not only buy out competition, but also acquire their technologies and integrate them into the Fitbit platform. And so what this will mean is that when Move is bought out by either Intel or Fitbit, they will likely cease to exist as a company and all of their assets and technologies will be incorporated into either Intel or Fitbit. Now I personally hope that Fitbit is the one that kind of wins this bidding process because I would love to see coaching technologies integrated with the uh, existing platform that uh, Fitbit already offers on their already existing wearables uh, or even potential wearables in the future. So with the reality of the Move buyout pending, it would make sense to not buy a Move wearable at this time Time because you're probably not going to see long-term support for that specific wearable. Now the next bit of wearable news that we have is regarding the Apple Watch Series 3. Uh, we don't exactly know when the Series 3 is going to be released. There is some that are speculating that it will be released here in quarter three. That would be the fall of 2017. So we're looking at probably a September or October release date. And there's also those that are saying that we're just going to get a small refresh of the existing Apple Watch Series 2 and that we're not going to see any real major changes uh, and, until you know, 2018 or something like that. Uh, now, no matter what happens, we do kind of have a rough idea of what we may be getting with the Apple Watch Series 3. There have been several leaks. What we will likely see with the Apple Watch Series 3 are a few things. Number one, we're going to see integrated sleep tracking. Up to this point, uh, the Apple Watch hasn't done a great job with sleep tracking. There are third-party applications uh, that do provide sleep tracking to uh, that, that compete you know, with Fitbit and Polar and, and Garmin products, but we haven't seen that really with the Apple Watch yet, and so we're going to see with the Apple Watch Series 3 better sleep tracking, something that integrates with Apple's system and provides you with, uh, with detailed sleep information. Additionally, the Apple Watch Series 3 is likely going to be able to track heart rate variability. So heart rate variability measures the time gap between the beats. So you have, of course, your beats per minute for active, active uh, exercise and also your resting heart rate. But heart rate variability will look at the variability between the beats, specifically the variability between your resting heart rate. And what we know is that uh, those who have a high variability between their resting heart rate tend to be those who have better cardiovascular health, tend to be less stressed individuals. And so the Apple Watch Series 3 will be able to, to measure those stress levels, those physiological stress levels, measure your cardiovascular health uh, through heart rate variability, and that's one more additional metric to measure uh, your overall health conditioning. Now, one of the possible caveats with that is that the built-in optical heart rate sensor that is currently on the Apple Watch Series 2 is adequate for steady-state cardio exercise and for capturing your resting heart rate, but built-in optical heart rate sensors don't do a great job capturing heart rate variability. They're not that accurate. And so, for example, on the Garmin Phoenix 5X, which I have here on my wrist, it does have the ability to capture your heart rate variability, but it has to pair with an external chest strap in order to get a very specific 
specific and accurate reading for heart rate variability. So it's likely that, that the Apple Watch will also need for you to purchase a separate heart rate chest strap in order for you to be able to measure that metric of heart rate variability. Which makes me also think that there's potential that uh, Apple is going to be releasing a line of accessories that will pair with the Apple Watch that are Apple branded. So who knows, we could potentially see an Apple branded chest strap and other accessories that pair with the Apple Watch as part of the Apple Watch Series 3 release. There's even been rumors that the Apple Watch Series 3 will have an, a, an external band that can be worn and purchased separately with the device to measure things like glucose levels for those who are diabetics and or those who want to measure the glucose levels of their blood. So I would not be surprised at all to see a line of accessories of health and fitness related accessories that are sold in conjunction with the Apple Watch Series 3. So that's your wearable news update for June 2017. There's actually not a lot this month to speak of. There are obviously other wearables that will inevitably be released throughout the summer. And so stick with us here on this channel as those wearables are released. You'll get more of these wearable news updates for July and for August of this year, as I'm sure there'll be additional stuff to cover and talk about. Thanks for watching. Hope you found this video helpful. My name is Eric and I'm the Techie Agent. We'll catch you next time.